Hi guys, this is Jordan here from ASM of Land and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna answer one of the most asked questions about my Subaru and I'm also gonna give you a lot of details about it. Is my Forester repainted and everything that come with it? What did I use? How I did it? Was it difficult? And most of all, how's the paint holding up after all these years? Let's get to it! So even though I don't have any footage of the process because I did it before starting the channel, I really wanted to make this video to answer in details all of your questions. But I do have a lot of pictures about it and I'm gonna use them to illustrate everything I say. So first of all, yes, my Forester is repainted, not worked. I decided to repaint it by myself because it was cheap and in my opinion, way easier than a full warp. So all I used is paint in spray cans, sandpaper, masking tape, degreaser and newspaper. And by the way, I listed everything down below in the description, so make sure to check it out. It cost me around 80 euros of paint. I already had everything else, but if you add it to the total cost, you're gonna be up to around 100 euros. And it's gonna be pretty much the same in dollars. So we can all agree that is a non-expensive way to change the color of your car and to be unique. I used in total 60 cans of Montana 94 in craft brown color for two layers including the opening, so inside of the doors, the boot, etc. I started with a good wash of the car. After that, I sanded it with 240 sandpaper where the clear coat was peeling off to smoothen the surface and then I did it all again with 500 and 800 grit sandpaper. If you have an orbital sander, it will save you some time but also your finger skin. The idea of the sanding process is just to broke the clear coat in order to have a good grippy surface for the paint. You don't want to sand on everything to naked metal. That's a no-go. After that, I removed a few parts. Actually, not a lot. I removed the hood, front grille, headlights, uh, some plastic trim of the opening, the logos on the boots and the fuel tank trap door. And then came a very, 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 very long process. Masking everything you don't want to paint. You have to think about everything. Plastic trims, seals, interior, the wheels, well, everything. And the Montana 94 having a very high covering power, you also want to cover the floor and everything else around your painting area, if you care about it. Before starting to paint, you want to make sure you clean and degrease the whole surface. For that, I used white vinegar. <laughs> it stinks, but it's less likely to mess up with your paint. You should definitely spend a bit more time and effort around the window seals because they are usually pretty messy and it's also a tricky surface to access. I made the choice to not use primer. First of all, to reduce the cost and then because the Montana 94 is actually a very tough graffiti paint made to stick on every badly prepped surface. If you want to use primer, you can, but make sure to use the same brand as your paints and also to apply your paints once the primer is totally dry. Then you have to comb it. This is kind of the schnorkel modification. You just have to do it and spray your first rock of paint and it's pretty exciting actually. The first layer have to be thin. I started with the opening and then closed everything to paint the car's body. And here is a few tips for your paint application. First of all, I did my paint job outside. This is not ideal, but I had no choice. You will have to avoid windy and rainy days. Also, during the painting process, you don't want your car directly on the sun because in that way, the paint is not gonna dry properly. You can get the floor wet to avoid any dirt and dust flying around your fresh paint. Also, you don't want to paint under very low and very high temperatures. Don't use the stock nozzle of the spray cans. They are usually 
not really good. What I recommend you is to get yourself some fat caps. They are called like that and they are actually just large spray nozzle. And it's gonna be way better for large surface. Also, you can get some skinny caps, so skinny nozzle for a thin spray for details and tricky accessible surface, especially like in the interior of the doors. Get your cans warm before painting and usually to store them inside your house is enough. You're gonna have better results painting vertical surface and this is why I removed the hood. That's because I wanted to put it vertically to paint it. And that was a good move. The car's roof can be pretty tricky to paint, so you can definitely use a small ladder for better access. This is what I did, and once again, it worked well. Don't hesitate to look at your fresh paints at different angles and with different lighting. It will help you to see uneven application and then to correct it. Before spraying the car, just press something else just to make sure that the spray cans and the nozzle is working well. Also, once in a while during the painting process, you can actually wipe the nozzle with a paper towel to, to remove these extra paints and to avoid the nozzle to, to spit on your paint. You're gonna want to wait 24 to 48 hours before getting your car wet or getting a car wash or something. Because even if the paint seems dry on, a, on the surface, the paint score is not. So be careful with that. Also, safety first, guys, I really suggest you to wear gloves, a mask, and also eyes protection. For the paint's application itself, you're gonna want to make very smooth, fluid, and long strokes all around the body of the car. And also something I really recommend you is to start spraying outside the surface you wanna paint and stop spraying after the surface you want to paint. So you, you never push the nozzle, look, you know, right on the surface you want to paint. Because this is this will result with bad finish. Then you can go for the second paint layer, which is gonna be a bit thicker than the first one. And after the second layer, your car should be fully painted. And you can stop here here, just like I did. But what I recommend you is to go for a third layer, just to make sure everything is nicely covered and have a perfect look. You can also go with a clear coat for a professional finish and extra protection. And once again, I skip that part because the Montana 94 is actually so tough, it doesn't really need it. So, at the end, was it difficult? Yes, that's one long, difficult and exhausting job. It took me two days from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. to prep the car, mask everything and paint it. Then I still have to put back in place every parts I removed. But is it worth it? Yes, I'm really proud of it and the look of my Forester in Desert Tan is absolutely awesome. And most of all, unique. When you see it, you know it's mine. And finally, the question you're all waiting for and I get asked a lot is how's the paint holding up after all these years? Well, after three years of intensive use, you saw that in my videos, I can tell you that the paint is holding up very well. High pressure washer, mud, ice, narrow trails with a lot of branches. This is not a problem. The paint is still looking strong and good and I really love it. But there are still two things from my experience you have to know. First, is the extra care around the window sills. That's why I told you to put extra time and effort around it. It's because I didn't and it results with the paint spilling off. That's totally because of a bad preparation before the paint's application. I should have sent it and cleaned it more. The second thing is how the color changed because of the sun's UV. And it's hard to tell on pictures because the lighting is always different. But actually here on the inside of the door and uh, the outside, I hope you can get it on camera, but you can see that at first it was really a craft brown color and through the years with the sun hitting it pretty badly all, the, all day long, it turned into um, some kind of lighter and yellowish 
shade. And that's it. Now you know everything about my Forester's paint. If you want to do it, I really think you should. You're gonna learn a lot during the process and it's more likely that you will be satisfied with the results. And remember, we don't drive show cars anyway. So I really hope these videos have been helpful and it will help you for your paint job. And maybe it will inspire you to do the same. And don't forget to check all the links in the description to see what I use in detail. So if you like this video and want more helpful DIY videos, please subscribe to my channel. You can also check my Instagram account, my Facebook page and my merch store. And if you want to support me in another way, I also have a Patreon page. So thank you guys for watching and see you next week.